This video will demonstrate standard and advanced symbology selection in ArcGIS 10.1. In my table of contents, I have three different layers. I have a points layer, a lines layer, and a polygons layer. Depending on which layer you're symbolizing, you'll have slightly different symbolization options. You get to the symbolization options the same way for all three layers, and there are two common methods. The first is to right click on the layer in the table of contents and then choose properties. This will bring up the layers property window. Click on the symbology tab and then you can click on this button here to bring up the symbol selector. The second method is to double click on the symbol in the table of contents. That too brings up the symbol selector. The symbol selector has a few things that we need to discuss. At the top you can search for symbols by keyword. So let's say I was looking for a red symbol. I would type in red and hit the search button and any symbol that has been tagged with the keyword red will show up. And you can see it returns quite a few for me here. To clear my search I hit the clear search button. On the left in this scroll box these are all the symbols that are currently loaded. These symbols are all referenced by styles, and there are multiple styles that you can use in ArcGIS. You can even create your own. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. To reference more styles, click the Style References button. That opens the Style References window, and here are all the other styles that you can bring into ArcGIS Symbol Selector. So let's open up the Real Estate. So I'll select that in the list, click OK. And now when I scroll down, after the standard symbols, I will see the real estate symbols. And these are all the custom symbols in that real estate style. If I wanted to create a new style or load another existing file not loaded by default in ArcGIS, I would return to the style references. I can either create a new style here, which you can then uh, collect symbols so it's almost like a favorite section or you can create new symbols and you can add existing list to your style list. Once you select a symbol by clicking on it in the left, so for instance I'll click on circle 1 here, you can change its visual variables. So for instance I can change its color and there are a lot of standardly or commonly used colors located here and each one of them tend to have a name, so for instance here's Cherry Cola. You can click No Color, or you can click More Colors. In More Colors, there are three sliders, one for red, green, and blue, but you can change the color model by clicking this drop down on the top right hand corner and go to CMYK or HSNV, for instance. Under Properties, it gives you the ability to use Dithering and to check if a color is null. I'll let you search help to figure out what those are in more detail. In addition to color, you can change the size of the symbol. Also, you can rotate the symbol. Since this is a circle, we're not seeing the rotation, so let me switch to the square. It's currently at zero rotation, but as I increase that, you can see that it's rotating in a counterclockwise manner. When I click OK it accepts the symbology changes. Now you can see I have the squares rotated on the screen. Now, now let's look at a few advanced options. Let me open up the symbol selector again and now I'm going to click on edit symbol. When I click on edit symbol it's going to bring up the advanced editing options. Here we go. And in the top left hand corner is our preview for the symbol. I can zoom into the symbol, I can zoom out, or go one to one to show it at 100%. I can also uncheck this box to turn off my crosshair in the back. Underneath that, just like we can layer items in GIS on the map, we can also layer multiple symbols together to create a new symbol. So for instance, let me create a new layer. And for that layer, I'm going to let the computer catch up, there we go, I'm going to do a character marker symbol. I could choose a different font and uh, each font is essentially a different style in ArcGIS currently. 
and I'm going to choose a circle. And so now you can see I have a black circle in the middle of a black square. But you can't see that black circle, so let me change its color to say red. And now you can see the layering effect. If I click back on the square, I can edit the properties of this layer. And so for instance, let me add an outline to this if I can. Let's see here. Let me select, I think I may need to go with, instead of a character, let me go to a simple marker symbol. There we go. And for the style, I'm going to choose square. I'm going to check use outline. And I'm going to choose red as the outline. And so now if I zoom into that you can see that I have the black out, uh, the red outline around the black square, which has a red circle inside of it. In addition to dealing with the symbol itself, you can also provide what's known as a mask. And a mask is also known as a halo effect in ArcGIS, and that allows us to uh, sort of give it a uh, surrounding color. So we can't see the white too well, so let me just choose a blue, and you can see that blue that is working as a halo, sort of an offset around my symbol. And this is often used in labels uh, to help offset the label from maybe a busy map background. So let's say I'm happy with this symbol. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to save this symbol as a new symbol. So I would give it a name. I'd provide it with a category and any tags that I'd like to use to search with at a later time. So there's that symbol. Now, for lines, we're going to access the symbol selector the same way we'd select it with a point by double clicking on the symbol in the table of contents. And again, we do have the search capabilities and we do have a list of all of the symbols that are in the Esri set. If I want to add more style references, again, I can click the style references button and check them here. For the line, all I can change is the line color. and the line width. If I click Edit Symbol, I can add extra layers to the line. I can change the line caps and the line joins to make it look coarser or smoother. There are even some templates I can use to set dash, uh, a, a dash pattern, and other line properties like putting arrows on each end. And if I go to the properties of the line decorations, I can even add multiple line decorations. There's a lot that we can drill down to in there. Last, we have the polygon. For the polygon, we can change the fill color, we can change the outline width, and we can change the outline color. Just like with the other two symbol types, if I click Edit Symbol, I can add multiple layers. I can sh actually change the outline, and I can make the outline a dotted line or some sort of other layered line. Lots of options there. And what's interesting with the polygons is you can make it a gradient. You can make it a 3D fill. I don't happen to have any 3D items on my computer. You can do a line fill, so for instance, hatchers for the hatchers you can turn them on their side as you'd expect and of course when you click line that will change the line properties the symbol selectors should start to look familiar as they all seem to reference each other the marker fill symbol fills it with the markers that we were just playing with on the points so again these should look very familiar the picture fill symbol allows you to uh, put a picture inside the polygon. So you would choose a bitmap, EMF, ping, JPEG, or GIF. And then lastly is the simple fill symbol, which is what we started with. Our color, outline color, and outline width. And that's the basics and a little bit of advanced parts of symbology at ArcGIS 10.1.